Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Lucifer Leghorn coming back at you with another video. Now, this video is responding to a question from a commenter about Satanism. Let me just get into my computer here. All right. So this commenter <laughs> I love salty comments but uh, this guy he actually asked me a very uh, interesting com uh, question uh, I just have to find it I did have it up but apparently when I had my uh, uh, here we go. Apparently when I had my laptop closed, it reset things. So, Greg Torchia asked me, so what's up with satanic values in God We Trust, 1776? Now, when, I don't have my wallet with me. When he's talking about the In God We Trust, 1776, he's uh, referring to the In God We Trust, you know, that we have on the dollar bill. Um, first off, Greg, nothing on the dollar bill is satanic. It's Masonic. All right now, it's referring to the Freemasons and the Masonic temples and whatnot. All the symbology there is Masonically based. So, just to get that out of the way. Satanists do have a core set of values. We actually um, have, depending on your denomination, your denomination will have its own set of rules and uh, edicts that it actually uh, correlates to. Sorry, I'm just adjusting a few things here. Outside of that, almost every other edict and correlation rule books and whatnot surrounding Satanism is based off of this, the Satanic Bible. This is the end all for all Satanism. This is the book that started it all. And in it, you find our first set of rules that were that was ever publicly canonized, and it's called the Nine Satanic Statements. <clears throat> I'm making this video really quickly here because here shortly I have to go pick up my kid from school. So ah, here we go. So the Nine Satanic Statements, and you know, we actually have the Nine Satanic Statements the 11 satanic rules of the earth, and the 9 satanic sins. I'm going to quickly go over what those rules state in this video. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, don't start typing. Each rule in its respective books, I actually have two books here out of my library, um, actually comes, like in this one, the 9 satanic statements, e almost each and every single one of them is explained in this book in detail. Um, so don't just take them totally at face value. A lot of them you can. Um, with a little bit of common sense, you can. But don't just take them totally for face value. Go ahead and pick up the book and read them through. Um, the other ones are also contained in here, because Anton LaVey wrote them later on. So without further ado, what are the nine satanic statements? The first one, Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence. Satan represents a vital existence instead of spiritual pipe dreams. Three. Satan uh, represents undefiled wisdom instead of hypocritical self-defeat deceit. Ugh. Ugh. Got a little tongue tied. Number four. Satan represents kindness to those who deserve it instead of love wasted on ingrates. I'm telling you what, if more people paid attention to that one and focused and applied it to America and focused on American citizens instead of catering to all these illegal immigrants that are coming in, things wouldn't be quite what they are now. We wouldn't have some of the problems we have now. Um, one of the uh, problems, I'll actually point, I'm going to take a quick moment here, and I'm going to point out that that rule right there. Satan represents kindness to those who deserve it, i.e. your 
your loved ones, your countrymen, your, you know, people who belong, people who have earned your kindness, your love. Focus on that instead of love wasted on ingrates. Now this is, I'm going to explain this one right here. Look at California. Freaking sanctuary state and look at what it's doing to it. Sanctuary state laws and being kind and fluffy bunny to everybody, politically correctness, is ruining the state. It is literally ruining the state. I've explained before that, you know, San Francisco, the birthplace of modern Satanism, San Francisco was where Anton LaVey lived. That's where he had his black house. And that's where his daughter still lives, to the best of my knowledge. And whatnot. It, it was the birthplace of this book. And it is shit filled now. Literally shit throughout the streets. Be why? You know, it's got needles throughout the streets. This is love wasted on ingrates. You know, people who. homeless. People who are not going to return to society. Who will literally shit and defecate anywhere that they can out in public they will literally shit on the beauty of something that you have created just because nobody's going to stop them because you're always going to be inclusive and welcoming that is a huge prime example of this rule being applied you look at almost any other state that does not have sanctuary cities, that does not go all in liberal. And they're nothing like that. It's good. It's better. You still get your bad elements, but it's better. Okay? So that's a prime example of that rule being applied in the real world. Alright, so number five, Satan represents vengeance instead of turning the other cheek. This is something that we all understand. 9-11. What did we do after 9-11? What did we do after Pearl Harbor? Were we going to sit, sit there on both occasions and roll over like cowardly dogs? No. We went after the fuckers. And we won. I don't even know what I had marked there. <laughs> I lost the mark. Oh well. Satan represents responsibility to the responsible instead of concern for psychic vampires. <clears throat> now, psych the term psychic vampires has changed since this was written. Um, I tend to use the term social vampires. And again, take a look at the people, the homeless people infesting um, California, you know, Los Angeles and whatnot. Take a look at these Mexicans who are coming over the border, invading our country, taking our welfare, taking our jobs if they can, or under the table pay or less pay, or just flat out refusing to, you know, adapt to our economy. Look at the uh, Muslim immigrants who refuse to adapt to our economy, who refuse to learn to speak English, who refuse to do anything, you know, that isn't going to enhance the Muslim community. You know, they don't do any, they, they actually go out of their way to destroy the American community or whatever community that they are in so they can promote their own propaganda. That is actually a very good example of what a social vampire is, and that's an entire culture that's doing that. Um, take a look at Dearborn, Michigan. Very good example there. So, um, Satan represents man as just another animal. This is number seven, by the way. Uh, sometimes better and more oftentimes worse than those that walk on all fours. Who, for his divine, spiritual, and intellectual, intellectual development, has become the most vicious animal of them all. It's very true. Just look at the world around us. You, know, you just look at humanity in general. We're nothing more than animals. We're just like a dog or a cat. Only we're 
we have our own ability to communicate. We can be creative and make things and whatnot, and we can develop religions to excuse ourselves. Number eight, Satan represents all the so-called sins as they lead to physical, mental, or emotional gratification. Stop typing. There is explanations for that. It's not what you think. Stop typing. Get the book. Read it up, because I'm not going to go through it. Number nine, Satan has been the best friend the church has ever had, because he has kept in business all of these years. And that is the truth. When you look at people who go to church, what are they most scared of? Where do they not want to go when they die? They don't want to go to purgatory. They don't want to go to hell. Who runs hell? Well, hell is hell's run by Satan. Okay, so there you go. And that's just the sp spared down, parsed out version of it. There is two other set of rules, and I'm not going to go into them in this video, but you can look them up on your own, actually, and uh, you can figure out, you know, all of them. I will say, you know, actually I will go a little bit into them. <clears throat> you know, I mentioned that, you know, yeah, I will go into them. As much as I can. So, the 11 satanic rules of the earth. I'm just going to be shooting right through these because I got to get going here very shortly. Um, so, it is also called the Lex Satanicus. Do not give opinions or advice unless you are asked. Keep your mouth closed. Do not tell your troubles to others unless you are sure they want to hear them. When in another's lair, show him respect or else do not go there. If a guest in your lair annoys you, treat him cruelly and without mercy. Do not take that which does not belong to you unless it is a burden and to their to the other person and he cries out to be relieved of it acknowledge the power of magic if you have employed it successfully to obtain your desires if you deny the power of magic after having called upon it with success you will lose all that you have obtained if you don't believe in the power of magic to begin with that one doesn't apply to you but if you do that one does apply to you do not complain about anything which you need not subject yourself to. SJWs, please pay attention to that one. Most of the time, you can just walk away. You can just walk away from things. You don't need to infest our shit. You can create your own. And then have your own little happy little fluffy bunny farms. Do not harm little children. That's number eight. I'm going to read that again. All of you ingrates who think we sacrifice children, we, number eight of the 11th Satanic Rules of the Earth says, and I quote, do not harm little children. And again, same motherfuckers out there who says, oh, but what about sacrificing chickens, dogs, cats, and whatnot? Number 10, do not kill non-human animals unless you are attacked or for your food. That means we don't go out hurting or abusing animals. We're just like anybody else. We'll go out and we'll hunt a deer and we'll bring it home for food. Aside from that food, you know, food is the primary thing for us. We cannot go hunting. Technically, we don't go trophy hunting. We go hunting for food to bring home to feed our family, to feed ourselves. That's number 10. So 9 and 10, pay attention to those of the 11 satanic rules of the earth. Number 11, when walking in open territory, like down the street or whatnot, bother no one. If someone bothers you, ask him to stop. If he does not stop, destroy him. Yeah. So, there's the 11 satanic rules of the earth. The final one is the nine satanic sins. These are going to be very quick. So, 
The first satanic sin is stupidity. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Think before you act. Second one, pretentiousness. Don't try to be a poser. Third one, sloppicism. Basically, trying to be something that you're not. It's just like being a poser, and it's also trying to overreach what you're able to do. Number four, self-deceit. You can fib to yourself that Donald Trump is, it's, it, this is a good one. The Democrats saying Donald Trump is freaking still in collusion with the Russians, that he's obstructing and whatnot. Even though the Mueller report that has taken two years of investigation, billions of dollars, and over 500 some odd witness accounts, statements, and testimonies have cleared Donald Trump, and it has been proven allegorically and unequivocally, unquestioningly, that he's innocent. The Democrats still want to say that he's guilty. They still want to say that he's doing it, that he did it, that Russia was involved with the 2016 elections. It's a prime example. Another prime example is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's mental inability to take responsibility for her own actions and think she is always in the right, especially with the Green New Deal. Ugh. How, how she could have how she even thought cow farts were going to get past Congress is, is beyond me. But that's, that's hypocritical self-deceit. Uh, number five, herd conformity. I think that's pretty uh, obvious. Don't be a sheeple. Number six, lack of perspective. Basically, look at all sides of a situation and solve your problem using all the information. Don't tunnel vision yourself. Number seven, forgetfulness of past orthodoxies. Oh my God, have we not heard this one before? He who forgets the past is doomed to repeat it. Enough said. Counterproductive pride. It's always good to be proud of your accomplishments and achievements. But when you let those accomplishments and achievements go to your head and think you're all that, like some of my commenters in here who think that they're all that and that their shit don't stink, that is what's called counterproductive pride. And that's how I usually end up successfully tearing most of these people down. Because they think that they've got the advantage when they don't. And number nine. A lack of aesthetics. Lack of aesthetics refers to the physical application. Because I like to comment about movies, video games, you know, especially superhero stuff. My background is sort of geared towards that. Yeah, we got some Star Wars stuff because I like Star Wars and I like talking about Star Wars. It's helped set up a mood. You know, also the background, you know, it, it it sets up a little thing. It's called an aesthetic. Whatnot. If I'm doing a ritual or whatnot, because Satanists are always portrayed as bad guys, we kind of like to keep it dark, we keep it creepy, it keeps it magical, it keeps, you know, it keeps people able to hold on to their suspension of disbelief. And that's all in aesthetics, you know. An aesthetic is how you portray yourself to the world. If you just forget about all that, and you just forget about a lack of aesthetics, where are you going to be? Anyway, so, Greg... That's, that's the base rules that almost all satanic rules from different denominations are built upon. Um, they change from group to group. I even have my own set of rules that, again, is built upon 
these uh, sections of rules that I personally follow. But these are the core rules that at the root of them all is where we find our moral compass. You know, a lot of people say Satanists because they don't believe in God. Well, some of us do, uh, but because we don't follow the Ten Commandments, that we have no moral guide. Because we're not Christian, we have no moral guide. That's not true. They also say the same thing about atheists. Well, again, not true. You don't need a religious text to give you a moral compass. Some people prefer it, though. And if people want to point to Satanism as saying it, it does not have any morals or whatnot, well, I just proved to you guys wrong. Part of our very credos says we can't hurt animals, we can't hurt children. So all of you fools out there who are out there saying that Satanists are sacrificing chickens in your local uh, cemetery, ain't happening. They're not Satanists. If somebody is out there sacrificing any sort of animal, you need to call the police. If they're trespassing on a local cemetery or abandoned building, call the cops. Satanists don't need to trespass. Most of the time we have our own religious temples in our homes. We're very self-reliant and we do it all ourselves. This is Lucifer Lake of Orden coming back at you with another video. I hope this was informative to y'all. If you find this sort of subject fascinating and interesting, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification. That way you'll always know when I'm putting up another video on any topic, including Satanism, and it'll be easier to find for you. Uh, if you like this video and you found it, again, informative, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the su subject matter, even if it is informative, Go ahead and give me a thumbs down. I can understand it, but then go away. You know. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. Please keep your comments respectful. You know, I get too many trolls coming at me about you know converting back to Christianity and whatnot. I'm gonna be making a video on why I can never go back to Christianity. There is actually a very good reason. So to stop trying to say, oh, you need to turn back to Christ, because it ain't going to happen. It will never happen. And even if I did choose to leave Satanism, I wouldn't be going to Christianity. I'd probably be going back to another pagan-style belief. So, this is Lucifer Lake Gordon, and I'll see you guys later. I'm out of here.